So welcome to episode 20. So this would be the last episode of the series. So in this episode, I'll be describing a conceptual framework of how slicing of, a, of an STL is done. So yeah, next. So I'll start this episode by a misconception again. So the misconception is resolution versus accuracy. As you can, as you probably already know that if you look at some commercial 3D printers or any 3D printers, basically they'll tell you what is the resolution of the layer height they can achieve, whether it is 50 microns, 100 microns, 200 microns, or even less than 50 microns. So basically, I want to say that this layer resolution doesn't really affect the accuracy of the part because they are, in theoretical terms, they are like two separate entities. So let me describe by reading out this slide to you. So imagine you have a printed object A, which is a 3D printed cube that you already 3D printed, and you measure it has dimensions of like 4.9 cm, while in while the actual CAD model on your computer has sides of 5 cm. So by slicing the part with a smaller layer height, you're not really improving the accuracy of the part because the accuracy of the part is still like 0.1 cm away from the actual. But by slicing it at a lower layer height, you're just merely improving the resolution of object A. So I think this is a misconception that I want to tell you. And let's begin with the episode then. Next. So moving on to the aims and learning outcomes, I think this video is quite short. So the aim is to understand the framework of how slicing process works. So the learning outcomes is hopefully you can describe verbally or in written form the slicing process that is undertaken by an STL file into a G-code type file. And hopefully you're also able to describe how hatching, whether you're hatching from inside out or outside in affects the model. And lastly, describe possible layer errors. So yeah, next to the introduction, I believe. Yeah. So basically, the slicing software does two main tasks. First is to slice the layers and then to create the hatchings and to create the machine path to follow the hatchings. So yeah. So the first important thing to know if, of, of how a slicer works is that you have to know that when two planes intersect each other, a line is created. So this line can be like mathematically defined. So this is a very important concept to have in mind before we proceed on to tell you, before I proceed on to tell you how a slicer works. So yeah. So the very first thing that a slicer needs to know is that it needs to be able to identify a suitable layer height. It needs to be able to like knows that each layer is like 100 microns or 50 microns because this layer height could be dependent on your machine capabilities or on your material size. If you have a large material size, the layer heights cannot be too small or else it would not work, I believe. So this is the first step a slicer has to do. It has to be able to move in this height step, like 100 microns, 200 microns, 300 microns and so forth. So the next step it has to do, so the next step is that the slicer has to identify which of the triangles the line, the layer plane is actually intersecting. So basically it has to identify whether the plane is intersecting the triangle in whichever of the cases as shown in the slide. So the slicer can identify from case 1 to case 5 basically based on the the vertices information the vertices coordinate so if two of the coordinates are like above the above the plane line so it could be the case 4 or case 5 and if the third vertices of that triangle is on the plane line then it will be case 5 and so forth so the slicer has to identify which triangle is intersecting with the layer plane so next so basically once the triangles are identified 
the intersection between the the triangle facet and the layer plane will create the line as I said in the first few slides and this will give you one in, in, an equation for one line and eventually if you join the lines together you will form the slice model of that particular layer so yeah so from at this point onwards what the slicer have is an outline of the layer slice so now it has to hatch inside basically is to from the outside contour it has to fill up the inside of the contour so basically it's called hatching so this information i'm going to tell you now is from a discussion that i've heard from a group at facebook so basically it was discussing on whether this hatching should be done from the outside in or from the inside out so basically these are two ways hatching can be and there are actually many other hatching strategies that would produce various kind of build quality of parts but let's discuss on this issue in this video so basically when you hatch from outside in you are ensuring that the borders are very well defined but the disadvantage of it is that if you print if if you are printing from the outside in and if the outermost layer is an overhang then your layer might just drop if you print from inside out basically the problem you have is that probably the outermost contour is not accurate because the inner materials the inner hatching line would probably would somehow expand and push your outermost layer a bit further out but the benefit of hatching from inside out is that if it is an overhang there is a chance that the outermost layer would not droop so badly because it is it is still connected with the next outermost hatching line so yeah i know th i know this sounds a bit complex but i'll try to improve it on the next time i yeah next so with that i've explained a uh, framework of how slicing work so in this slide i'll be telling you about a possible issue on slicing basically it's called slicing error so if you have a cat model of a curved surface for example a hemisphere as you can see and then you slice it so it becomes a layer part as you can see in image b so what you have is that the curve is not represented once again this is like very similar to the stl so you have this layering ad error basically it causes a step like step like error so this is a possible error in slicing which you could probably reduce by reduce by increasing the resolution of your part so yeah so with that i finished the episode and i will proceed to the summary so what a slicer has to do i think i missed out the first slide first slice the, so the first step is that a slicer has to identify what is the layer height whether it is 50 microns or 100 microns then it has to find the intersecting triangles with the layer plane Next, it has to identify the type of intersection, whether it is case 1 or case 5, by checking with the vertices information. Next, it has to calculate, it has to find out what is the equation of the line that forms by the intersecting triangles and the layer plane. And then it has to do it repeatedly for the entire layer until it forms an outermost boundary. And once it is that, you can, then the machine can create the hatching for that layer by hatching by creating the hatching line from the outermost to the innermost so with that i hope you understand what the slicing does next thing i explained a little on like slicing layer errors basically if you have a hemisphere and you slice it you will lose some information of your part due to the step like effect so yeah, 
So some more, some personal opinion is that I think slicing and hedging strategies are still very much under development. Improvement in these aspects can result in better resolution and part quality. So sometime in the commercial 3D printers, when we talk about hatching, it actually relates to like the internal lattice structure of what you're printing. So I think this, this is also a very promising aspect because the different lattice structure will create parts with unique physical properties whenever you like stretch them in different directions. So with this, I end this episode and I'll proceed on to the references. So now for the references, I would first like to thank Stratasys for their information on the misconception between resolution and accuracy. I think that's quite useful. Next, I would like to thank Laser Focus World for their image on slicing and hatching, which I thought it was quite a very good illustration of what a slicer does. Next, I would like to next I would like to thank O Top Q and Teskyogu and Anver for their image on the different cases in which in which a slicer needs to identify. So yeah, next. Next, I would like to thank Krishman and Jara El Monte on their image on showing the summary of how a slicer works. I think that gave you a very good summary of how the slicer works. And next, we have an image by Terence Ang from the SG Red Red group at Facebook. I think his, 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 observation on how hatching works from inside out and outside in is quite useful and it's very informative. Lastly, I'd like to thank Kashmir's Tata and George's Fadel, Amit Bachi, Nadim Yazid on their image on the slice layer error. So once again, I'd like to thank all these references because without these references, I'll be unable to present this video to you and I think you're very good indeed. And so this marks the end of this episode series and I hope you stay tuned for next year. I'll probably revamp all the episode and make it a bit more informative, improve the references and make it more easy for you to absorb the information I believe. And I'm so probably looking at some form of an online assessment as well. So thank you once again and yeah.